weird that we ran into Supergirl the day that Supergirl aired. You already hit it? Yep. Okay. You're listening to the worst marathon ever. Hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rush Outfield. And what is this? This is the second worst marathon ever. Is this still going on? Oh, sadly, yes. Let's give it a promotion to first worst. <laughs> yeah, by default. You know what I wish we had done? It has superseded. At the very beginning, I wish we had said, Hey, kids, we're going to start a marathon today, and depending on how many donations we get, that's how many episodes we do. So for every $10 that, some, that is donated to us, we'll do another episode. Not telling them that we had done 10 that day. <laughs> but, you know, just hoping that people would donate and we'd They'd be like, be okay, and we've donate still got us. more coming because you guys are donating and it's not too late if you want to donate. If you like what you hear, although I think at the very beginning we mentioned that there were a bunch of Pixar rules. Yeah, that was a giveaway. Next time we're not going to do any giveaways like that. Next time are we going to do a marathon? The third worst. <laughs> third worst, that would be good. <laughs> Please donate to the show, though. Big needs to... Uh, what was it you wanted to do with the money? I wanted to take those classes from... Uh, oh, Dave Wolver. Uh, yeah, David, who shall not be named. That's right. He has all these writing workshops that cost not a little bit of money. And uh, if you donate to the show, then Big will be able to go and not apply the things that he learned <laughs> at those panels. Do they have one? Oh, they had one about recharging your spark. Yes, you have, have one about recharging your creative batteries, I believe. Getting things done. You know, I was thinking about that just the other day. That sounds like a good one, though. Recharge your creative batteries. Yeah. I was thinking about that just the other day about uh, way back when, when I, when I was doing CrossFit, my trainer challenged me to eat some certain meal plan for a whole month. Mm -hmm. And I actually stuck to it the whole month and ate just nothing that would make you happy at all. And then at the end of that month, I thought, you know what? If I can do that, then I can write every day for a month. And so I challenged myself to do that, and I wrote every day for a month. And I remember you, it was when we were doing the show, and now like one time we recorded the show up until like 3 in the morning, and I hadn't written yet, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to have to write after you leave. And I did, and you were just amazed by that. And was... the sad thing is I got to the end of that month, and I was like, okay, I did it. The end. Never have to write again. <laughs> Like Why? saying spivot. <laughs> Why didn't I just... Okay, you did it for a month, now let's do it for two. Well, how many days in a row do you have to do something before it becomes a habit? It's supposed to be didn't 28 days. 28. So it didn't work for me. <laughs> I suppose one day not doing it breaks that habit immediately. If it's a positive habit. If it's a negative habit, then you cannot break it unless you don't do it for like seven years. Oh my, really? I don't know. Is That's the way it is though, right? Like you are, if you smoke cigarettes, you can't just quit. You like have to slit your wrists and stuff to actually be able to quit. Right, but that's but, got a chemical in it that's designed to well, hook you, isn't it? To give you pleasure when you take it and, and cause you withdrawal when you don't, right? I, yeah, that's true. But lots and lots and lots of stuff do that. Like, like murdering you, drifters. Right. And you drinking your Diet Pepsi, or not Diet, what am I saying? Your full, <laughs> your, <laughs> leaded, <calorie>. your <laughs> leaded Pepsi. You do that every day. I have to. And to break that habit, you couldn't just not do it for a day. But you don't write for one day, and you the next day you're like, eh, I'm not going to write. That's all it takes, man. It takes nothing to break a positive habit. Everything in the world to break a negative. And the exact opposite. To create a positive habit takes moving mountains. But to create a negative habit, one time you smoke a cigarette, you're hooked for life. <laughs> I don't know. that. It, is that true? I don't know, but it sure seems like it. <laughs> the ads... We'll make it seem like that. <laughs> but uh, Yeah, you're not going to be able to stop smoking until you have one of those things a that you have ring, to talk yes. through your neck. And it's like you... after one cigarette, this is my voice. <laughs> I right. smoked once in junior high. And you squeeze the gunk out of your trachea and your lungs and stuff. They pull your lungs out and just squeeze all the butter out right there on the commercial. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? Those awful... Oh, they're always so horrifying. They're and so they, just Because they think that they can scare people into not smoking. It might work to keep you from starting, I guess. I don't know. Little kids see that and they're like, ah! I guess, but I don't think anybody picks up a cigarette and he's like, oh, this is flavor country. <laughs> I think what they do is... <laughs> 
And it takes several, right, before they're like, oh, hey, I'm not coughing anymore. And boy, do I look cool. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I don't know. I'm, I'm not really a smoker, but... Uh, I'm just... But I'm go I plan to start just <laughs> as soon as I'm done with my writing goals. <laughs> that will be my reward. That's going to be soon. <laughs> when you and I finish our, our novel that we were going to write months ago, I will pick up smoking <laughs> as a reward to myself. Good job, announcer man. You can hang out outside having your smoke breaks. That's right. If he were here, he would say, don't all your friends smoke cigarettes so uh you're gonna pick up smoking and we're but until that we're gonna talk about rules of uh pixar okay we are in the home stretch here folks there's only a few left one thing i fear is that we've told the same stories over and over again because it's taken us this many months to do this marathon uh that's do people hate that or pretty likely i don't know i hope not because if they do they've dropped stop listening to our show years ago okay because we've at least told all our stories probably three times. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> rule number 20. Number 20. Number 20. Exercise. What? It does not say that. That sucks. I don't want to exercise. It took me a long time to get this fat. If I exercise, it'll go away. Yeah, he's earned all of his flab. <sighs> Taking years of practice, of, of dedicated eating. Number 20, exercise. Sitting around riding will make you fat, so you need to exercise. No, that's not what it says. It oh, says, I believed you! <laughs> it says, exercise. I Take the building blocks of a movie you dislike. How do you rearrange them into what you do like? Okay, so we can't take a Pixar movie and... <laughs> an example of where this was done. Yeah, you can't really give an example of that. This is just an exercise for you to do, I guess, in your spare time. We've we've mentioned this, I think, before on the show, where you you go to see like a trailer, for example, and you're like, oh my gosh, that looks like a great movie. And then it says, from, from the, the mind who brought, brought you the village, unbreakable, <laughs> and <laughs> the sixth <laughs> sense. And you're like, oh, no, that's probably not a good movie. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry, that's Two wrong. Two of those were good movies, though. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's wrong. You go to a trailer and you think, oh, my gosh, that looks like a great movie. Then you go and see the movie and you're like, oh, boy, it sounded so good, but they just didn't do they didn't do well with what they had. I mean, the, the premise is such a great premise, but they took it here, which was just not interesting. I think we've mentioned that a few times. You know? Oh, yeah, it's way worse when you see the seeds of a good movie in there than when it's just there was never any chance that that movie could have been good. Uh-huh. I don't know. I, I'm trying to think of an example recently. Like, I, I try not to see bad movies. Like Gem and the Holograms, for example. You never looked at that and said, oh, this is, that could be a really good movie. I mean... Uh, I don't know. I mean, if they had done a direct adaptation of the 80s cartoon, I, I don't know, that... that there were some cool ideas, and it was made by the same people that did Transformers and G.I. Joe. Yeah, it could have been fun. At least They could have done a Starsky and Hutch kind of a thing, where they basically poked fun at the whole thing instead of doing it seriously. Like, the, I mean, the show Starsky and Hutch was not a Owen Wilson, Ben Stiller comedy kind of a show, but they made it into that when they made the movie. So maybe they could have done something. Not that I'm saying that that was a great movie. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they could have done that similar style thing where they did something, uh, taking it and making it kind of silly. Like they, if they'd set it in the eighties and had them all with the hair, just that would have been, <laughs> just seeing the eighties hair again would have been enough to get me to go well, there and was, to have the misfits. There were certain things, certain aspects of like the Reagan eighties that are funny now. That back in 1986 or whenever Gem was created, you didn't realize that they were funny. Or, you know, the excesses of the 80s and the fashions of the 80s. And, you know, the, the a whole idea, the music video world of, you know, we're going to be on MTV and, and millions of kids are going to watch us on MTV and all that stuff. That could be amusing in an ironic way in 2015. Yeah. For, for the, but instead there's like, she's a singer 
and she becomes a YouTube star yeah. and a sensation on YouTube. And she does have some pink in her hair, folks. So we didn't abandon the source material completely. Yeah. But also, like, the Synergy was the name of the computer on the gem thing. And if you took, like, the 1980s cutting-edge computer yeah, with, well, like, 1980s holographic technology, which was non-existent, basically, like little pixels in the air and stuff. And you're like, ooh, wow, a hologram and stuff. That could be pretty funny. That could, yeah. That could that would that would have been a better seed, I think, than what they did. I don't know. I, I read I was reading a review that said that movie sucked. Well nobody went to see it either, so by the time this episode comes out, it will be a, a footnote in history, like uh Hasbro made a Ouija movie, and Hasbro of course made that battleship movie, which I think are are just footnotes now, but Neither of them were as unsuccessful as Gem and the Holograms. Really? Ouija? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ouija. I was that like some wrong. horror movie? That yes. They did? Oh, okay. Because I'm I'm thinking back and I don't remember this Ouija. Thank you. Movie. You can see the flashing light over there of a car whose alarm is going off. Hopefully, you can hear it at home too, folks. I can neither see nor hear it. That's all right. Okay, we so exercise. Take a, what was it? The premise of a movie Take you the, hate? The building blocks. The, of, yeah, building blocks. The seed of a movie that you dislike and turning it in, turn it into something that you do like. Okay, well, here's a good example. Batman and Robin. Just a shit fest. But there's the seed of a good movie in there. You could have, with the right script and the right direction, made a good fourth Batman movie with those characters in it and that basic premise of Mr. Freeze trying to reanimate his wife or keep his frozen wife alive by stealing gemstones or, and stuff like that. I, I They've, haven't they done, didn't they do a Batman versus Mr. Freeze animated film that was actually really good? They did. It was supposed to come out theatrically, but then after Batman and Robin came out, they were <laughs> like, oh, we're going to do that. We'll just release video. it straight to video. Yeah. yeah, I heard about that and heard that it was actually really good and I thought, What? Mr. Freeze is real? Was he played by Arnold Schwarzenegger? I knew very little about Batman, I'll have to admit, back in those days. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, when I saw the Mr. Freeze on Batman and Robin, I thought that there was no way that you could ever make that not suck. But years have gone by, and now I can see that there probably is a lot of ways you could make it not suck. And uh, yeah, they just had the wrong team with the wrong vision. They were trying to out-cheese the Adam West Batmans. <laughs> they were trying to make something that would make Rish Outfield more angry <laughs> upon hearing stories of it. Well, yeah, it, it was an uphill battle, and, and I've probably ranted about this before. I don't know how you get a movie like Batman and Robin, because it takes hundreds of people to make a movie. And a hundred decisions every single day. And how can they all be the wrong decision? <laughs> it just, I, I don't get that unless somebody's trying to sabotage yeah. the movie. And here's a little footnote. I won't edit this out, but if you can fast forward, guys. Around the same time, post Batman and Robin, Warner Brothers was trying to get a new Superman movie off the ground. And it was going to be Superman Lives or Superman Reborn. And it nearly happened. I mean, it got so close to being made that there's test footage and concept art and screen tests of Nicolas Cage as Superman in the costume. You know, you hear these stories about Superman lives. Holy cow, how could that movie ever have... Really, what a train wreck that would have been. Wow, that would have done permanent damage to the Superman franchise. But there's a documentary out now that's like the untold story of Superman lives or... The Life and Death of Superman Lives or something like that is this documentary. And they talk about, they have interviews with Tim Burton and the people that you know were involved in it. And the way they present some of these crazy, stupid ideas, you go, you know what? When he says it, it doesn't sound crazy and stupid. <laughs> if he had done it at that angle, oh, that might have worked. If he'd shot and it all from that below. Stuff. Because, <laughs> you know, they're just talking about like... Nicholas Cage had this idea of how what Superman is and I'm going to do it in this way because he's an alien and no one has ever examined what it would be like to be the only alien 
among all these humans and it doesn't feel like a human and all that but suddenly I was just like wait that that's true he is an alien and there's no other aliens around I, gosh maybe maybe he's right maybe he was the right guy for the job I mean okay he looks terrible in the suit yeah because he's Nicolas Cage but who knows that movie there's there's a chance that movie might have been good well if they just given him you know a little bit of a wig and he could have had like the mullet like the 90s super oh he did, with did the you, long have you hair. not seen it yeah i've seen okay. he's got the long in the back but at the front is he's still already like half bald isn't he maybe i mean he, he had basically black and a black a suit. black jesus wig on and oh okay and uh, around that time when, when he did like con air he was really muscular yeah. too and he was the biggest thing going too i assume that's why they wanted to cast him He'd done Con Air and The Rock right at about that time. And uh, Face Off, you know, three action yeah. movies in a row. Anyway, it's it's there's a chance, there's an alternate universe where that movie came out. Yeah, I read the and story it was about it. absolutely a disaster and it hurt Superman. And then there's an alternate universe where that came out and it was good. And they're like, you know what, this, this shouldn't have worked, but it did. This was excellent, guys, or whatever. You know, I, Chris Rock was Jimmy Olsen in that movie. And... Okay. Uh, you, on paper, that doesn't... Chris Rock, guys? As Jimmy Olsen? But, I mean, you and I live in a world where James Olsen is, is way more macho than Chris Rock <laughs> yeah. on the Supergirl show. It might have worked if it was Chris Tucker <laughs> instead of Chris Rock, but... Do you understand what I'm saying, <laughs> Superman? Whoa, I turned the, the volume up on these earphones, by the way. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> they are now... My ears are now ringing. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, he was huge right around that time, too. I guess a little later, though. Like, four, four years or two or three years later. Right after the fifth element came out, and then he just burst onto the scene. Boy, um, he was obnoxious in fifth element. <laughs> yes, he was. And, I mean, he's obnoxious in everything, but in the Rush Hour movies, it kind of worked because Jackie Chan was so straight, you know? Right. Was so subdued. Anyway, sorry guys. I, how did we get to talking about? We're oh, exercise. About bad the movies. building, building blocks of a movie. Indiana Jones Four. I don't hate that movie nearly as much as other people do, but there were the seeds of a good movie in that. You could take that story and that movie, and make a really good Indiana Jones movie out of it. Uh, yeah. It just yeah, they, they they zagged too many times when they should have zigged, and I don't know. But it, it would be a really interesting exercise. There, there were people that would do the Phantom edit or taking the actual footage of those Star Wars prequels and trying to make make them zag instead of zig, trying to zig make them work. Of zag. Right, that's right. That because there were lots of z z zagging, and you know I think that that's a really interesting creative exercise. Like one of them went as far as to have. All of Jar Jar's dialogue be in an alien language, like Chewbacca. Yeah, didn't they just then, take, like, the foreign language track? Like, they grabbed the track from, like, I don't know, the Italian version or something like that? They played that and then put the subtitles up whenever he spoke? I don't believe so. I, 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 I think that they just took his dialogue and reversed it or something. Oh, like was that. it that? See, I'd heard but, that the eye that sticks out of the wall of Jabba's palace in Return of the Jedi and says, blah, 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 blah. And then he says, oh, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Apparently, I've heard that it's speaking Polish. Okay. All right. <laughs> Which is interesting. I've heard them talk about the foreign languages that they do. Like, and... Okay, the Jawas. And this was weird. I had always heard that they'd taken like some kind of obscure African dialect. But what it was, was they had a bunch of people who were native Zulu speakers. And Ben Burt sat down with them with his tape recorder. And he asked them to tell a story in Zulu you know, with excitement and danger and all that stuff. So you get all sorts of emotions. He recorded that and then he played it back to non-Zulu speakers and said, imitate this. <laughs> Say what this guy is saying. And I don't know what the difference is between actual Zulu and then somebody who doesn't speak Zulu trying to say Zulu, I guess maybe it becomes more nonsensical. Yeah, it becomes gibberish. The words, but, I'm sure, are going to be wrong, but just the sound... But the... he said the, the reason he did that was because the Zulu speakers were not actors. They, you know, they, they were just... They were telling the story. And so he got voice over people, act, actual actors, to emote, but speaking gibberish. Uh-huh. I don't know. Anyway, I just, really bar I just barely read that the other day, and I, that amused the heck out of me. <laughs> But uh, anyway, but, yes. Yeah. Sorry. 
somebody took Jar Jar's dialogue, made it unintelligible, and then tried to come up with new dialogue for Jar Jar that made him less of a buffoon. And that's a really interesting creative exercise of taking the footage that you've got in front of you and how do we reinterpret it so that there's less poo and, and icky icky goo in that stuff. And less of whoopee whoopee. Sorry, I did forget the whoopee whoopee. <laughs> that's my favorite word <laughs> that, from the whole uh, That alien now trilogy. says, that'll be 16 credits. And you're like, whoa, wow, that makes a whole difference in that scene. <sighs> Is that what Han gets paid in? He does get paid in credits, right? Yeah. At the end, they're, they're like, here's your money, gold digger piece of crap. Well, they call money it Leia calls it money, love. yeah. Then that is what you will receive. Your but, friend is quite a mercenary. I was talking with somebody, and I don't think it was you, the other day, about the Hobbit trilogy and how I'd never seen it yet. And I just thought, you know, someday maybe I'll see it. And he was like, maybe you should wait and, and get one of those fan edits where they edit the, all three down into... Maybe this was you. It was me, but that's okay. You were telling me about how they have the Tolkien edit where they've only included what's actually in the novel. And I'm sure there's other edits, too, where they, they've tried to cut it down and maybe not even included what's in the novel, but... Included, you know, the stuff that makes the story best. And that's, a, you know, another exercise. That's a beyond that kind of exercise where you're taking uh, the building blocks of several movies and trying to rearrange them into a movie that's good. The, the adaptation of the book to the movie to uh, another adapted cut just seems like a, a weird extra step in there for some reason but see i would be really interested in seeing something like that because they aren't bad movies they're very well directed well written and you know well acted and the great there's great special effects but they're just so unbelievably bloated that that would be kind of a cool exercise not even to spend you know three weeks doing it with one movie but just taking a scene that's like a 20 minute scene Okay, the, the, the dwarves explaining to Bilbo what their mission is and singing the song and on and on and on saying, okay, we're going to take that 20-minute scene and we're going to see if, what we can do in seven minutes with it. We're going to cut it by two-thirds and see if we can't maintain all the information or, you know, the stuff that's important and keep a little bit of personality too because that scene was also there to help you meet the droids, droids, <laughs> to meet the dwarves and learn, you know, that they have different names and personalities and stuff. But it's just everything in those three movies was like that. Where it's like, okay, they sit down, they have the meal and they sing. Then it just keeps going and keeps going. Yeah. Uh, but yes, that I, 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 I think that that's a really good, if I were a film teacher, I think that would be one of my assignments is, okay, let's talk about a movie. In fact, everybody's going to do a paper where they talk about a movie that they didn't like. Take this movie and discover why you didn't like it, what the filmmakers might have done so that you did like it. I think that's, that's a creative writing project. It's a critical thinking project. It's um, an exercise. Okay, what you said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, writers need to exercise just every now and then. Because writing make you, makes you fat. So you, you're just sitting there in a chair all day long, you're not going to build any muscles except for maybe in your wrists and fingers so didn't you exercise. just make up wasn't that not actually the rule <laughs> <laughs> all right folks thanks for listening uh time for us to go so we will see you again tomorrow on the worst well second worst ep marathon ever good night go to the show that Gets My Goat is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license, meaning share it with everyone, but don't sell it or change it. Yeah, I mean, that's I've, I've heard about the Hobbit trilogy and how I'd never seen it yet. And uh, I thought, well, maybe someday, you know, we can hear that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to sound about... like sad RTD too. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now it doesn't. Never mind. <laughs>